This is my 48 terabyte file server running Procmox with ZFS. I just finished the backup to this super micro server because we're gonna upgrade the server today with new CPUs. So let's first turn off the Freenas uh, backup file server. Super micro backup file server runs Xeon ELF uh, 5640s, six cores running at 2.27 GHz each. And it has 96 GB DDR3. And here you see the backup pool, and it has 3 TB uh, SATA hard drives, and it has 1 Hitachi, 5 Seagates, and 4 Western Digitals. So shut down. Now let's log into uh, Procmox. So the host name of my file server is Swordfish and that is not because of the terrible hackers movie but because of the comic. This is the real Swordfish. So right now we have two CPUs, Xeon E5 2620s running at 2 GHz. So let's uh, turn this machine off and upgrade it. And the uptime of the machine is now 107 days. Where do you shut uh, this machine down? Uh, oh wait here. So let's shut it down. So let's take the server out of the rack and onto the workbench. I really love this machine. It is really powerful. It's really fast. I edit all my videos of it. So, yeah, I'm ha really happy with this build. If I can get it open. There you go. Let's do a quick overview of the server. Here we have the two boot SSDs. Uh, both are 480 GB Kingston SSDs. We have full Noctua cooling, so 12 cm fans in the middle and active uh, cooling on the CPUs. In the front we have uh, 6 8TB Seagate SAS hard drives with two uh, Kingston Enterprise Server Crate SSD for caching of ZFS. We have 120GB uh, memory DDR3. Here we have an IBM M10 15 SAS controller. And here we have a solar flare uh, 10 gigabit network card. So let's remove the CPUs. And why did I choose for the E5 2620s Sandy Bridge CPUs? Now they were free with the motherboard. And this is a Tyen S7050 motherboard. And I really love this board. Dual Socket 2011 for version 1 and 2. So I can also go to Ivy Bridge CPUs, which I bought as an upgrade. Let's do the other CPU. And the E5 2620 is not a bad CPU. It uses 95 watt each, so it's not really a low power CPU. But it has 6 cores running at 2 GHz each, a turbo of 2.5, so it's pretty decent. But I got them for free of course and I was thinking yeah I will upgrade them later and just get the first get the system up and running with uh, CPUs and it runs great. So let's clean the CPUs. There's more than enough uh, cooling paste uh, on the CPU, so I probably uh, can use a bit less. So here we have the info of the E5 2620, the Sandy Bridge chip that's currently in the server. So let's add to compare. So let's get to the big list because there's a lot of CPUs uh, 
for this platform but there's also the 2400 series and the 4600 series in this list so it's a bit longer than necessary so let's see we here we have the 2620 and i wanted to have like a low power cpus and that are the l's uh, let's see which l's we have we have the 2630 l and this is are all the v1 cpus and a 2648L, oh, only two L's for the 26, E5 IV bridge. Okay, here we have the V2 CPUs that are on 22 nanometer instead of 32. Let's see which L CPUs we have here, the 2650L. And we have... Wait, let's... The 2628L. The 2648L. The 2618L. 2630. Let's compare all the CPUs and see what uh, the L CPUs have to offer above the 2620. Oh, it's a little bit too much for the screen. Maybe if we make it smaller. No. Okay, the V2 CPUs are 22 nanometer. And the V1s are 32 nanometer. And here we see that the 2620 is 6 cores running at 2 GHz with 2.5 turbo. So we have a 2618L V2 that is only using 50 watt and it's also a 6 core. So that's a pretty nice CPU, also really low power, like almost a half of this CPU with a lower turbo. Then the 2628 is an 8 core running at 1.9 gigahertz, 70 watt. Then we have the 2630L is 6 core. Uh, 60 watt so it's the same CPU as this only uh, less powerful so let's drop it because I didn't buy it actually I didn't buy any V1 as an upgrade so where's the other one uh, here the 2648L is an 8 core running at 1.8 let's also drop that out of the list I think then we have everything on one page. So the 2630L V2 is a 6 core at 2.4 gigahertz running at 2.8 turbo 60 watt. Then we have 2648 V2 that's a 10 core running uh, at 1.9 gigahertz 70 watt. But I didn't buy that CPU. I went for the 2650L V2s and those are 10 cores running at 1.7 gigahertz, 70 watt each, and I bought them for 42 euros each. So I think that's a pretty decent price. So instead of two 6 cores, I will go to two 10 cores. I will have 40 threads. Uh, the base clock is a little bit lower at 1.7 gigahertz instead of two. The max turbo is a little bit lower, 2.1 gigahertz instead of two and a half. We have 25 megabyte cache per CPU and they use 70 watt each. So I think this is a really nice upgrade but for a file server it's not really needed. So let's install them. So here we have the CPU so let's open the package. So I'm going to use Noctua NT-H2 thermal paste. And I'm going to do a little drop in the middle. And four little dots around it. But you don't really need that much. These are the Noctua coolers for 3U chassis. And they are really good. The machine runs really silent. 
and uh, good temperatures you should really consider this Noctua cooler uh, for your file server because it's really great. And the advantage of two CPUs is that you have two tools, so it makes the installation way easier. It's really important that you first update your BIOS before installing the new CPUs. I forget it on my Supermicro server and that was a big hassle with swapping CPUs. But on this machine I already did it, so it should be uh, no problem. So the system is working with the new CPUs, we are now in the BIOS. So let's go to the CPU configuration. CPU speed 1700 MHz, socket 0, 2650L V2, 10 cores, HT, VTX, uh, level 3 cache, everything is ok. Yes, awesome. So that was pretty easy as an upgrade. So let's check how many CPUs we have. <laughs> CPU 0 to 39. <laughs> ah, that's a lot of CPU cores. <laughs> but let's shut down the system and put it back in the rack. I don't have the rail kit for this machine, so it is uh, on half shelves, but it works. And I just put it here in the front with a screw so it won't fall out. So some power tools, because it's a pretty long screw. This is the nice thing about real servers. I'm now in the remote management and the system is now off. So let's uh, log in. So we are now in the dashboard. Device power status is off. Uh, remote control. So we can reset the server. Power of server immediate. Uh, power of server orderly shut down. Power on server, power cycle server or power button. So let's turn the camera to the server and then I will press perform action on power on server. So power on server, perform action. So the server is booting up and I really enjoy Progmox. What the advantage is for Progmox for me is it's just a normal Debian Linux. So you can do anything you want, you are not restricted. If you reboot your config is still how you set it up. So you have a lot of control what you do and they have root on ZFS. So you can boot the system of a ZFS array without any issues and really good virtualization stuff. So you should really try out Procmox if you like an OS with a real command line and also with a web interface. So it now shows here host is currently on and power on server is grayed out so we can reset server if we want. And if we go to the dashboard device power status is on. Uh, here you can see all the CPU temperatures, uh, the dim temperatures, a lot of extra information, system uh, fan speeds. Is it already logged in? Oh that's cool. <laughs> I didn't log out here. so. Now we have 40 CPUs, 40 k Intel Xeon CPU E5 2650L V2 1.7 GHz 2 sockets. Memory usage is now really low, like 2 GB, but after the file transfers uh, that I did with backing up, it was around 100 GB, so it was really caching all the data, so that is really great, and that's why I put 120 
8 gigabyte in my file server just for caching purposes and ZFS loves memory. You don't really need it but I think it was 140 euros for 120 gigabyte memory. So yeah the price is really decent. So the machine is up and running again and it went really smooth. I think it's a really nice upgrade. I mean 20 cores but I don't really need 20 cores in my server to be honest but also the low power and I think this is not a CPU to recommend for a file server but this is my build this is how I like it and if I gonna run a lot of VMs I have a lot of horsepower and a lot of cores if in the future it's not enough speed I can always upgrade to any other socket uh, 2011 CPU because I can put in two 12 cores if I want or two very fast 10 cores if I really need the speed and most socket 2011 CPUs nowadays are like from 10 to 100 euros only the super high ends are maybe a little bit more but also not much more than 200 euros each there's a lot of possibilities with the server and for now I will run the two low power 10 cores. The current Ethernet network situation is a little bit uh, troubling. Uh, I mean I was busy with uh, keystones and it went wrong so this is a story for another day and also this temporary cable for the internet because the cable in the house I think it's cut 3 and it was only doing 100 mbit. Hmm. I need to fix this but that will be a video for in the future so thanks for watching and if you like to support me you can support me monthly on patreon or use my amazon affiliated links